What we have here is a 2014 Ford Fusion. Um, there are almost too many different models to even list. So it almost make you dizzy if I listed them all off. And in fact, I don't even think I can. There's like 20 different variations. There's a S with a gas, S with a gas hybrid. There's SE with EcoBoost, so that's the four-cylinder turbo. Um, then you have like the titanium lines, uh, which is their higher end. You have those in gas and hybrid. And out of all the hybrids, you have two different types. You have a, a, what I would call a basic hybrid, and then you have the top of the line, the energy model. And that's what this is. You see this? It's a plug-in hybrid, so it's got the bigger battery. And this is the titanium model. So this is like the top of the line uh, Ford Fusion for 2014. Um, I bought this car for a little under $3,000. It's worth in the neighborhood of $12,000. I pretty much bought it sight unseen with a very basic description. The guy just said, uh, does not run or move, needs towed away. So um, when I first got it, the battery, not the big hybrid battery, but the small battery that um, basically starts the internal combustion engine, was down to 4 volts. So it had been sitting a while. So I charged that up. Uh, put it in the car um, For whatever reason I, I found the ECM unplugged uh, So I had to plug that back in and uh, the engine fired up um, So that was good. The engine is good. Um, it's not that uh, Went to put it in uh, gear and this thing has suffered a transmission failure like a lot of 2013 through 2016 Ford Fusions and C-Max uh, cars have suffered So we're gonna be taking this transmission out taking it apart Maybe repairing it and putting it back in, maybe getting a used one, maybe getting a uh, rebuilt one. I'll go over all that a little bit later. Let's start taking things apart and uh, getting this transmission out. All right, let's start off by disconnecting the battery. You can see here I got the negative terminal of the small uh, battery for the internal combustion engine. The negative is removed. Okay, there's just a little cover here. Pull that off. 10 millimeter, pull that terminal off. Then in the back seat here, um, and this is probably the most important one. You're going to see a little cover. Uh, I think different hybrid models have them on different sides. But you're going to find a cover. And you're going to see this orange plug. Pull it out. Pull it toward you. Carefully here. Don't want to break it. Kind of gently pull that out. And this disables the high voltage battery. Very important as we uh, disconnect some of the high voltage cables. Okay, hood's open. Uh, this thing's super dirty. Probably should have uh, washed it all down before uh, working on it, but whatever. Too late now. Let's just get started. Hands are just going to get really dirty. I'm going to follow the Ford uh, instructions on pulling this out, kind of. One of the first steps is just to pull the subframe. I'm going to go ahead and pull all the top stuff off first. Uh, I'm going to attempt to try to get this transmission out the top here once we get all this stuff out of the way. Uh, if I can if I can't well, we'll pull the subframe and, and take it out the bottom But anyway, let's just get uh, the engine cover air cleaner uh, Air intake and air outlet pipes off. Uh, that's all this stuff. Let's do that. Uh, let's do that next Okay, all the air intake and stuff is off engine cover So basically you have two seven millimeter bolts here pull those out uh, work the air intake off then you have a couple seven millimeter hose clamps there and then onto the air intake which is no longer here uh pull that off um on that is a uh crankcase ventilation line so you just pull a tab pop it off and on the back pull a tab pop it off and that comes off that is also connected to the engine cover so you got a little um we call it fir tree that you got to remove there and then uh there is also a plug here um Maybe an air temperature sensor, mass airflow sensor, I don't know. Probably mass air, mass airflow sensor is what this guy is. And then to get the engine cover off, uh, you got a 7 millimeter bolt here, 7 millimeter bolt there. And then you just pop it off. You got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 little knobs that uh, the grommets sit on. So that's all off. Now I'm going to work on getting the inverter, uh, charger, uh, Basically, the transmission electronics stuff uh, up here off. And this is going to take a little while. And it's got coolant lines running to it. So I'm going to go ahead and drain the coolant at this time. And to do that, we'll get underneath here to get it drained. I'm going to go ahead and pull off all of the belly pans. So you got some 
uh, Torx bolts on the main belly pan underneath here. Uh, but I'm going to pull this front one off too, just so I can see everything. So there's going to be just several screws, but basically any screw I see underneath here, I'm going to pull off, pull off this front cover and the main belly pan. Okay, I got all the uh, belly pans off. It's a combination of uh, T30 Torx just all over the place. You'll just have to look for them. And then some 7 millimeter bolts along the front uh, from bumper here, from bumper cover. Uh, some other 7 millimeters that are attached into the splash shield for the fender. Um, just keep going around. <laughs> it's a lot of bolts. It's probably like 50 bolts. But uh, I pulled off the front, the main, and the far back uh, aluminum uh, belly pans. Just in case I've got to pull this sub member, um, you know, i got to pull that back aluminum one. And I'll have to do a little bit more uh, to get that off. But that's if I have to. We'll, we'll see. To drain the coolant, I opted just to pull the uh, lower radiator hose here. Um, I think it's the easiest way to pull or to drain this coolant. There was a drain plug on this radiator. It's uh, it's buried somewhere and would just splash everywhere. So this was the easiest way to not make a mess, in my opinion. And plus, this uh, this is the thermostat housing, and it bolts to the transmission. So this is going to have to come off anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull these hoses off. I'll probably end up pulling this whole thermostat off here in just a second, um, just to make sure we got all of the coolant drained out of this thing. While I'm waiting for the rest of the coolant to drain, I'm going to go ahead and start taking the cables off of this uh, this box here. On the uh, gas versions of the Fusions, this is where the battery normally sits. Uh, looks like, it kind of looks like a battery tray underneath here. So we're going to be pulling some hoses, some cables, uh, some more wiring in the back. There's a little bit of a coolant reservoir attached to this thing. Uh, I'll uh, take all that stuff off and get back with you on how it comes off. All right, getting this guy out. Um, this is how you do it, or at least this is how I did it. The two main connectors over here for the generator and motor. Uh, you got seven millimeter bolts here. Three of them on this plug, three of them on this plug. Pull the plugs out, set them off to the side. Uh, for the front electrical connections right here, uh, you can take this bolt out. I think it was seven millimeter, maybe eight. Um, pull that bolt out. You can see here where it bolted into the connector here, and then you can press the tab, pull the connector out. Then pull this bolt out, and it'll pull the cover off, exposing this bolt, same size as this bolt, and pull that bolt out, and then to press the tab, pull this out. For the coolant connections, these uh, gray little locks here, you just push them in, and then pull the coolant lines off, both of those. All right, what was next? Um, the coolant reservoir, these are 10 millimeter bolts here and here. I just pull those off just to move this coolant reservoir to expose the 13, mil 13 millimeter bolt down there. There is a 13 millimeter bolt here. And then one final one in the back right there. Okay, and once all that is out, uh, the last thing to do is get this um, wiring harness off. I just opted to uh, cut, I'll end up replacing I just cut the zip ties, pull the harness off, just so it's out of the tray. This plastic tray can pop out, but I didn't want to break it, so I, I just cut the zip ties, pulled it off, and I'm setting it uh, towards the back there. Now what I'm going to do is lift up on this thing, slide it forward, and then up and out. Okay, that is out. Um, just a quick note, there are some fir trees that are holding in the back of the tray, and I the tray... Uh, this rides in uh, clips on here and it clips onto the unit itself so you've at least got to pull this one off and uh, anyway I just pulled the whole tray off of the unit through in the trunk all right now let's get the actual tray that it sits on out looks like we got uh, one two three four five six bolts get that off okay and that tray is out um, you will also have to take off this 10 millimeter nut here. My middle finger is touching it. This bracket is just kind of pinching it a little bit under here. But then you just kind of finagle it out. And now I realize that this thing's going to have to come out the bottom. This has got a frame member here um, coming out here to support that tray. And that's just totally blocking the transmission from coming out the top. So 
We're going to have to do it Ford's way and take the subframe off, but I'm going to continue to do a few things up here, up top, uh, before I get done to that. I'm going to do all the top stuff first and then go down and take off the subframe. So next, I'm going to take off these cables uh, from the transmission. Uh, they're heavy, thick guys. Um, you, you could probably take this transmission out down through the bottom and, and out with them connected, but it, it's just one more thing in the way. I'm going to get those off. And then uh, some of this other cabling here, and then the shifter uh, linkage is going to come off, and this uh, electronic control plug for the transmission, I'm going to take that off as well. Okay, I'll get back with you in just a minute. All right, I got those cables out. They were right here, plug in here, and uh, right, right here, and right here. Eight millimeter bolts, three on each one. And then I just cut the uh, cut the zip ties and pulled the cables out. Okay. And then after that, um, there's two 10 millimeter bolts. One here. Sorry, it's really hard to see. Zoom in. The 10 millimeter bolt that goes here, and one that goes here for the shifter linkage bracket. And it pops onto there. So you just pop it off with a uh, pry bar and two 10 millimeter bolts. And then right up here, you can pull the cable out of where it it, uh, it likes to sit. Um, and then I just laid it across the top of the engine here. All right, and then the transmission control plug is right here. There's just a... Uh, a tab on it that you turn counterclockwise and then pull the plug out all right i think next is going to be this uh, thermostat for the the water outlet housing okay the water outlet housing is off and i gotta tell you that is a pain in the butt um take the upper radiator hose connection off with the housing there's a heater core housing uh heater core hose on the other side here and then a uh, vent hose right here that goes to the uh, overflow radiator reservoir tank. Take those three hoses off, and there's four eight millimeter bolts. Three of them are super easy to get to. That one, that one, and that one are easy to get to. This one is blocked by the transmission, so you've gotta like finagle your hand down here with a, with a ratchet to get that off. That was tough. Anyway, that is off. And the reason that has to come off is because some of the bell housing to engine bolts are right here, underneath here that you got to get to. So, anyway, uh, moving on. Since we know that the subframe has to come out uh, to get this transmission out, there's just not enough room to back the transmission up and drop it down without taking out the subframe. Uh, let's go ahead and get the axles out of this vehicle. Basically, anything that hangs off of the, the shock, we're going to want to just take off and strap up to the shock. For instance, the brake caliper is a big one. Uh, looks like there's ABS or wheel speed sensor here that goes down here. Um, that bolts in. That's going to have to be unplugged and come with the subframe. And we'll end up uh, unbolting this shock from the hub and send the whole hub and rotor with the subframe as it comes down. Let's, uh, let's get these brake calipers off. Okay, usual thing to get a caliper off. Just pull the dust covers off. This is an M7 hex on the end of there. Pull those off. Get the caliper up and out of the way. I like to zip time to the, uh, to the spring. While we are down here, this is the driver's side. I'm going to go ahead and uh, zip this nut off here. This is a um, one and a quarter inch nut. We got lucky here. This is an Arizona car, no rust, so the shot came came loose. I'm sorry, axle splines came loose. All right, let's go to the other side. Okay, here we are on the passenger side. You can see I've already zipped the axle nut off. This one's gonna have to be tapped just a little bit here. Looks like we did not get as lucky as the driver's side, but it, it should come right out. Basically, I will uh, put this nut on this way and a few more threads in it and smack it with a hammer and get this get this loose for the caliper don't forget you got a spring clip here get that off 
and again you got a, a dust cover and then a seven millimeter hex and then lower dust cover seven millimeter hex that should come right off am i going to be able to do this one-handed there we go all right now i will uh, zip tie it up to the shock Okay, got the caliper zip tied up. Did a lot of things here, but I'll explain to you what, what went on. Um, there's an 18 millimeter nut here on the sway bar uh, link to the shock. Remove that so that'll come down with the subframe. Uh, what else here? Let's look at the uh, bolts here. 24 millimeter nut, 21 millimeter size on the bolt here. Once you loosen this nut, you have to tap this bolt. You see it's got some splines right here. There's two of those, one there and one there. Tie rod uh, end, this is 21 millimeter. Spun that off, let it hang down. And of course, we got uh, this one and a quarter inch nut off of here. So now I will move this bolt out the rest of the way. We will undo the, I believe, 13 millimeter um, clamp that is holding on the uh, support for the axle there we're going to pull this whole axle out and the passenger side axle is out you can see the uh, input to the transmission right there where it goes in let's move over to the driver's side and we're back on the driver's side here a quick note man these brake pads are really good man it's like they were just changed not gonna have to mess with those uh, anyway this is the same thing on this side 18 millimeter nut here, pulled this off. Now we've got our uh, sway bar nice and loose there. Um, it's probably gonna have to actually kind of sit on top of the rack because we're gonna unbolt this rack and the sway bar when we put the uh, uh, subframe down. But anyway, uh, here is the same bolts, 24 millimeter nut, 21 millimeter on this side, of course, you really don't have to hold onto this because it's spline. You can just zip this nut off and then uh, pound this bolt through. Two of them right there, you can see that they're loose. Uh, and then the tie rod right here, 21 millimeter again, zip that off. And of course, we have the one and a quarter inch nut off of here. You can see, I can move this CV shaft around. So the difference on this side versus the other side is this goes in with a, uh, let me try to get this out of the way. This goes in with a uh, C-clip, circlip into the transmission. So let me see if I can do this with one hand. Basically you need like a pry bar. In this case, I'm using a tie rod ball joint uh, separator. You just get this underneath here and give it a knock. And it pops out. I had already done that. I did it from underneath the car where you get a little bit more leverage, but you get the basic idea. All right, take these two bolts out. I will pull this whole hub down towards me and uh, get this axle shaft out. And now the driver's side axle is out. So now I'm gonna get underneath the car and get the subframe down. There's probably more than one way to do this. I don't have the section of the manual on how to remove the subframe. So I'm just going to kind of figure this out. Once I get it out on the ground, I will uh, go over it and explain to you uh, how I did it. So I'll get back with you in a little bit. And here is the subframe. I'll go over uh, where all the bolts are to take this thing out. You can see the axles in front of it here. That's the uh, driver's side axle and passenger side axle. That's how they sit in the car, just like that with the transmission there. Uh, same thing with the subframe. This is the front of it. This is the back of it. This is the driver's side uh, hub, passenger side hub. So I'll spin this around here and go front to back. First thing you're going to have to do is take out the, it's a, like a fiberglass radiator support underneath here. There's a, two 13 millimeter bolts on that side, two 13 millimeter bolts on this side. And then a bunch of fir trees are on that that are, are holding like an, an air uh, divider or whatever. Anyway, after that is down, uh, then you can start taking these bolts out. Uh, once again, we've already had gotten the axles out, already had unbolted it from the shock tower, so uh, the hubs were basically loose from the top of the car. You got a 21 millimeter bolt here. Of course, this is uh, upside down. This comes up through the bottom like that, so you'll, you'll see that. Same thing over here. You got another one here. 
on this side there's also some wiring uh there's fir trees that go in this hole this one this one and then this one i, I broke the zip tie on this one trying to get this out and then after that as you keep moving back you got two 18 millimeter bolts uh one here one here for the stabilizer sway bar same thing on the other side these two and then this bolt is 18 millimeter as well and so is this one uh, they're longer than these uh, this is for uh, the steering rack the steering rack is held on right there keep moving back you got uh, two 10 millimeter bolts here this is what holds the uh, exhaust hanger on get those off and then furthest back uh, again these bolts are upside down they normally come up through the bottom but uh, two 13 millimeter bolts two 13 millimeter bolts and your last 21 millimeter bolts and then uh, you'll be able to drop the subframe down. I basically used uh, two jacks, one on this side, one on this side, and uh, just lowered it down and scooted it out from underneath the car. Okay, back up top, I'm gonna attempt to follow the rest of the transmission removal procedure as written. Um, <clears throat> the next step has me do is remove these top transmission bolts. There's one right here, I've already pulled it out, you can see. Um, one right there, that's already out and one right there they're all 13 millimeter pull those three bolts out on the transmission here uh driver's side there is a 13 millimeter nut here pull that off and pull this grounding wire off spin the nut back on and up here is the auxiliary fluid pump disconnect it there's just a tab here you press and then pull the connector out. This is one thing that is different on the energy models versus the regular hybrids is there's a electric fluid pump for when the car is in 100% electric mode, it's gotta have fluid moving through the transmission. That's what this is. You don't have to drain the transmission, but I'm going to, cause I'm gonna split this thing apart cause I'm curious what it looks like inside. And I might be rebuilding it myself. Maybe, we'll see. But I'm gonna go ahead and drain the fluid because I'm going to be cracking it open. Now is a good time. This is an oddball size. I don't know if they're all like this, but this was a 5 16th uh, hex. There we go. Let's drain it. Okay, transmission cooler lines. There's a difference here between the energy and the regular hybrid. Um, for the energy, there's this extra block right here, this shiny aluminum block. It's an auxiliary pump connects to that. So I have opted here, there's a couple different ways to do this. I've opted to pull off the auxiliary pump uh, hose out of the top of the aluminum block and unbolt the aluminum block from the transmission and pull this whole shebang out. There goes the seal. Um, reason being is I just didn't want to damage this block as I bring the transmission down. It's one more thing I might have to replace. Uh, so I'm just going to get this up and uh, out of the way. I'm going to take this even a step further. Again, this is the auxiliary pump right here. You can see that there is hardly any space right here uh, between the frame and the pump. I think the instructions say something about lowering this side of the, you know, lowering the transmission down a little bit as you finagle it out. I'm going to do this <laughs> even better. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this whole auxiliary pump off. Looks like it is just one more connection here in the back and um, like three eight millimeter bolts up here. And then I'm just gonna take this thing down. Aux pump is off. That was pretty easy. Um, yeah, it used to be right there. The last thing I'm doing on, down here on this side anyway is this electric cable here. Um, I'm gonna have to pull that off the transmission. It, it fur trees in like there, there, and a couple spots up here. Just, uh, Get the fir trees out of the holes and I zip tied it up and out of the way. So I mentioned this way early on. I'm finally getting back to it. This is the thermostat housing. Two bolts, one right here, one right here, eight millimeter. Pull those bolts out. You can move this thermostat housing out of the way. Once you do that, it will expose a bolt right here it goes in sideways that you need to remove. 
Why I'm down here, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out this bolt as well. 13 millimeter. At this point, I've been kind of going around the transmission and, and hand selecting the bolts I, I'm removing. I, I chose to do these. I, I'm basically doing the harder ones first. Um, right up here next to the catalytic converter. Uh, these are really hard to get to. Uh, basically, I, I sent a socket and extension through this. You're not going to be able to see it, but I sent it through this way over here uh, to get to this uh, top bolt. And then this, this bottom one, uh, I basically just used a 13 millimeter wrench, broke it loose, and uh, pulled the bolt out. I'm going to save these bottom four. Uh, that is this one this one and uh, on the back side here this one and this one so one two three four I'm gonna save those for last those are the easiest to get to right now we need to support this engine and transmission I can shake the whole thing um, it's just being held by the uh, top mounts so I'm going to put a block of wood and a jack underneath the oil pan here to support it. And we're going to remove the top transmission mount. Then we are going to undo these four bolts and slide this transmission out and down. Quick note. Strangest thing I've ever seen. There is no belt on this car. I guess that makes sense because it's uh, basically a mainly electric vehicle. But um, yeah, just a crankshaft pulley. No belt. No alternator, no water pump, no power steering pump because it's electric power steering. Must be electric air conditioning too. There it is. Electric water pumps down here. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. I'm going to put a block of wood and a jack underneath this oil pan. I'm going to take off the top transmission mount. I'm going to come back down here and take these four bolts out. Again, slide the transmission out and down. Okay, jack, gray jack on the left is on the oil pan, blue jack is on the transmission, supporting that. Coming up top here, we're going to pull these bolts out here, it looks like 18 millimeter. She is out on the ground, I call it a day. Um, let's crack this thing open, I'll crack it open tomorrow. Let's see what it looks like inside. Okay, we're back, it is a new day, albeit a rainy one um, here in Arizona. But uh, let's uh, let's do an autopsy on this thing. We got to crack this case apart. So basically, we're going to go around and move remove all of these bolts going all the way around the transmission. Follow those all the way around. Not forgetting this one right inside here. I'm going to remove all those bolts, and I'll be right back. All of the bolts are out. I counted 20 of them. Went all the way around. Removed all of them, including the one there in the center. There's a few pry points on this. I got the uh, pry bar under one of them. This is a pry point over here. Let's see here. We got another pry point right here. And then a third one. At least a, a third one over here somewhere. Looks like, um, oh, right here. Right here. So I'm going to pry this case up in those three points, moving kind of evenly going around. And uh, get this case off. All right, step on up, folks, and enjoy the show. Uh, this transmission is T rashed. All right, so pulling this thing apart, first thing I noticed was a bunch of metal chunks all over the place. There's pieces of. Uh, I'm gonna get a few more here. If you see in my hand here, um, it's a chunk of a. A tooth out of a gear. These right here, these are rollers out of a roller bearing. This, no clue what it is. It's bent up metal. It's all over the place. Heard that rattling around. And then I suspected that uh, this thing suffered the same failure as most of these do. Um, look at this roller bearing. Look at the play in that thing. All over the place. Take this gear out. Over all these teeth are just chewed up. On this side, the bearing is completely gone. There should be a tapered roller bearing, just like this. 
on this side. It is, it's gone. Look at the case. The case is trashed. Ugh. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to rebuild this. There goes my hopes and dreams of rebuilding this. This is, uh, this race is trashed, of course, but then the, the just all the aluminum around it, I'm, and it's eaten into the case down here. I'd be too concerned if I if I rebuilt this thing. So I'm either gonna have to go the used route or I'm gonna have to go the rebuilt route. I'll uh I'll pull the camera off the stand here and uh show you some close-ups of this a little bit more. Okay, getting in a little closer here, you can definitely just see how bad this is. It is all scarred up down there. I don't want to put a new race in there or try to put a new race in there and this thing back together with a case like that. It's uh, pretty darn nasty. And here's a close-up here. You can see all these teeth missing off this gear. This is the input shaft, right? This is what goes into the uh, output of your engine, the crankshaft. So this thing's got two electric motors in it. One is, one is off this shaft. Uh, I believe this is the generator. And this one here is the motor. That bearing kind of came out a little bit as I pulled this intermediate gear out. It should seat down there a little bit further. I need a hammer, but I'll, I'll just leave it. Um, and then this is the motor that drives the uh, intermediate gear, which ends up driving the ring and pinion. Basically your differential. Um, so, yeah, the... Center intermediate gear is what failed, and it failed on both sides of the bearing too. This one, uh, all the rollers are gone. Really, really failed on this side. And then in the other part of the case, where the other side of it sits, you can see how it was making a ring in here. It about chewed through the case and poked another hole <laughs> right, right through there. I, I've seen on the internet where that's happened to some folks where um, this race gets worn and it gives up too much tolerance, and that shaft rubs against the uh, the case here, and basically uh, acts like a hole saw. Anyway, um, I think that's all I really need to show you about this. At this point, I'm going to do some research on some replacement transmissions. I'm either going to try to find a low mileage used one, uh, somewhere around the $2,000 range, uh, or I'm going to try to research what it's going to cost to get a rebuilt one. Initial estimates look like it's about $3,200 plus a $1,000 core. I don't I don't mind buttoning this back up and sending this in for a core. I don't have a problem with that. Um, so I need to weigh the pros and cons and see what I, uh, what I need to do. What do you think I should do? Put it in the comments and I will catch you next time uh, with part two. And uh, we'll get this car back together and running. Hey, real quick, one last thing. If this video helped you out at all, please like and subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, and it helps us YouTube warriors out a lot. I really appreciate a subscribe. Thanks. See you next time for part two. Thanks for watching.